Hey everybody, Jeff here, and the long-anticipated Fade Agent Lore video is finally here. I wanted to wait a few days after her release to make this video in case any new information came out, and I'm so glad I did because we just got a bombshell of lore updates yesterday. A lot of it included Fade and what she's done so far on the Valorant Protocol. So for this video, we're going to take a look at her past that we know of so far, her voice signs, and what her goals are to paint her lore story picture. So let's get right into it. So thanks to Fade and all the dossier blackmail messages, we know pretty much all the names of the agents on the protocol besides KO and Omen. But oddly enough, we actually don't know Fade's real name. You know, the person who leaked out all that information. So the earliest information we really have about Fade is that sometime in her past, she lost someone of significant importance to her. Now to discover who you really are. If it was you that took him, I will pull your precious Valorant out of the darkness and lay bare your secrets. You are not as shadowed as you believe. Do not test me. We also saw Fade open up a little bit to Cypher during the interrogation he performed once they apprehended her. The more you talk now, the better I can guarantee your safety. This is something they say before putting a bullet between my eyes. No. No bloodshed here. I just want information. You just want revenge for how badly I embarrassed you. Only a little. <laughs> so, what do you know about the Valorant Protocol? More than you'd like. Indulge me. I know your operating guidelines. I know the location of your headquarters. I know your typical weapon loadouts, your R&D budget, the last six months of your mission archives, and the leave requests for every agent that bothers to file them. Should I go on? I'm impressed. Because I'm impressive. How did you do it? I have ways. Such as? Not every secret hunter needs a camera. Your radiance power, of which I am now quite familiar. Sorry. Your first communication to us. You mentioned someone was taken from you. I did. Care to explain? Why should I? You know what you did. I do not. We are not in the business of kidnapping. How convenient. It's the truth, whatever that means to you. If you didn't take him, who did? Let me tell you something, my friend, and listen to me well. There are other worlds than this. And now we are getting somewhere. We're going to visit the interrogation audio again a bit later in the video when I talk about something else, but these audio files confirm that the only reason Fade was blackmailing the Valorant Protocol in the first place for a while is because she thought we took him, the person taken away from her in her past. Now, we don't know who the person is. Rumors have circulated that it could be Agent 8 or Ruben Pontes. I don't think it is Agent 8 because if Agent 8 was the person that Fade was looking for all this time, like, you know, Brim would so totally be like, oh, Agent 8, yeah, I remember him. He's not here anymore. And then Fade would leave her merry way, leave the protocol in search of him. But I do think that the Ruben Pontes theory actually has some potential. If you guys don't know who Ruben is, I have an amazing Fracture Lore video that shows how Ruben was integral in partnering with Chamber and his mirror duck to destroy the Everland Research Facility on Fracture. But once those events happened, Ruben disappeared. Then recently in the Valorant test server, the board was updated behind the shooting range, showing Ruben's face on it all over it, and the emails exchanged with Orin McKenneth, his good friend on Fracture. These emails are the only evidence we have that Ruben partnered with Chamber to destroy Fracture. I just think it's a funny coincidence that shortly after we discovered the emails here, the blackmailer messages started popping up from Fade, then once Fade is apprehended and tells us the person she is looking for, Ruben's face is posted on the Valorant Protocol's mission board. Just a theory, but we need to move on with Fade's lore. So we don't know how she obtained her radiant power, but we do know that the nightmare she ingrains into people's minds originates from her radiant abilities. Such as? Not every secret hunter needs a camera. Your radiance power, of which I am now quite familiar. Sorry required a lot from Fade to communicate with it. I paid a heavy price to commune with Nightmare. 
don't waste it. And it is weird. Like, the way she talks about it makes it seem more like, you know, Nightmare is not like a power that directly results from her radiant powers that came from Radiantite, but more like it's an entirely different entity, like a demon, if you will. Like, she talks about Nightmare as if she's talking about someone or something. You don't need Nightmare powers to see them shaking. The Nightmare turns in our favor. Nightmare, take them! Am I reading too far into this? Or do you guys also agree? Uh, let me know in the comments if, like, the way she talks about Nightmare just seems off. Circling back to the voice line where she says that communicating with Nightmare required a heavy price, I wonder if that's what she means from what she said in her trailer. I've seen your darkest fears. This is just a theory, but what if Fade has to endure the side effects of controlling Nightmare by, well, having nightmares all the time, which she says would eat the nightmares alive that she has shown to the agents on the protocol. Perhaps Fade is kind of like Omen, where it's like a tragic story full of misery all the time. In fact, Fade recognizes the deep pain Omen goes through every day. They brought along Omen. His fear is a sorrowful kind like a broken doll lost in the attic. But since their powers are kind of similar with the theme of scaring enemies and the facts that Fade recognizes Omen's troubles, it does seem like she wants to get along with him. Omen, that gave me the chills, Abby. The good kind. Omen, with me. Nightmare thrives in the dark. See, there she goes again talking about Nightmare as if it's like some other entirely different being and not like a power that originates from inside of her. It's, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> well, moving on, we know that Faye's main goal in life at the moment is to locate and hopefully save the person she is looking for that meant so much to her in her past. That's the whole reason why she started blackmailing the Balor Protocol in the first place. She thought that the VP took him, the person she lost, from her. So she figured that exposing the Protocol secrets to the public would get them to give in if they did have him. Well, as we all know, the Protocol didn't budge at all and managed to actually locate Fade and capture her thanks to KO's incredible act of bravery and just being a total badass, he stopped her before Fade could escape the strike team. Wait, there they are! Where? The target's on the run. They're outside. Sending Volta to auto. I'm going in. KO negative. You're too high. You are powerless. Freeze. Hands in the air. Don't move. Get them up. No. Target secured. He's down. We got her. So, of course, once Fade gets apprehended, this is where Cypher's interrogation comes in. He felt that Fade, you know, once she found out that the VP doesn't have the person she lost, felt like she could be used more as an ally rather than an enemy. So, with Cypher's referral, Brimstone recruited Fade into the Valor Protocol. But naturally, agents like Jet are kind of pissed that she's a member of the team now, and understandably so, with the blackmailing and personal attacks earlier. On the other side of the coin, Fade is still weary of Brimstone stone and will leave in an instant if she feels they are lying to her so what do i call you now sir commander <laughs> maybe not the nightmare is not an easy thing to wield rarely has it led me amiss and yet it has that is regrettable but it is behind us i will help you scout this omega earth as you call it but there can be no secrets between us i carry your banner as long as it brings me closer to him. With that said, if I even sense that you have strayed from your word, well, you will be lucky if you never see me again. Pretty much right off the bat of Fade joining the protocol, she got to work, you know, likely to like earn the trust of the protocol and vice versa. Fade knows about the Omega project that, you know, the protocol has been working on for quite some time now, with KJ building the teleporter to scout out and make contact with Mirror Earth, which is now starting to be called Omega Earth instead, instead of Mirror Earth. Uh, once Neon powered up the teleporter and with the go-ahead from Brimstone and the rest of the agents on the secret mission, Fade stepped into it. I'll let Fade herself explain what she saw. I am back from Omega. You got lucky. The inbound terminal is abandoned. It is safe for us. 
I checked the area, but could not go far. I felt fear all around me. The whole city is on edge. I do not know why. But in the mines I touched, I saw a place of secrets. It is near another terminal. If you want answers, that is where you must go. So that secret mission has so many interesting things about it. We just need to talk about. First of all, it's a great thing. The receiving terminal was abandoned so that like, you know, she didn't teleport there and it was immediately arrested. But why were all the civilians there on Omega Earth on edge? And why did Fade feel fear all around her? The other terminal with the place that holds a ton of secrets Fade was talking about is likely going to be the location of the next map in Valorant. Killjoy even tells Brim this. So whatever fate fell in the minds of the civilians there, this place must be of importance for good or for worse. Okay, so you would think that it would be like extremely awkward for fate to join the protocol and like, you know, try to make peace with all the agents that she like clearly blackmailed earlier. But surprisingly, according to the voice lines, it actually looks like that mostly everyone forgives her. There's like friendly banter, like with Chambers, Cypher and Ko. So Chambers more than just a nice suit. Well done. You have such a way with information, Cypher. After this, let's trade notes. K.O., a Radiance Nightmare. So glad we are very good friends. But she also at the same time still pushes the boundaries a little bit and pries into the fears of some agents on the VP. Their Cypher has a fear filled with regret. Voices calling for help, and he cannot answer. Reina, after you take from the Fallen, what remains? makes me wonder <laughs> that Reyna is not as fearless as she appears. That Cypher one is brutal as those fears are likely due to when he lost his family and they all died. The word regret is interesting though when she says that because maybe Cypher had an opportunity to save them but wasn't there to do so. I also wanted to point out that it looks like Fade actually enjoys Viper and actually commends her on the brutal tactics she uses against the enemies. Like the only agent on the protocol, maybe besides Reyna, that actually like commends and enjoys uh, Viper for doing these awful things. Together, Viper. Fear and Toxin is an effective combination. We must make the enemy afraid. Look at Vipuriani. Scary mask, scary voice. She understands. Of course, though, the voice line to Brim still shows us that Fade is very hesitant with joining the VP and, again, will leave instantly if they betray her. So overall, I think Fade is an extremely interesting agent with an amazing lore potential in the future of Valor. I honestly can't wait to see what more comes out about her. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to notifications if you're new. Now, with all that being said, Jippy out!